all here, which is our amazing presenters of the day. We're going to start with Valentine on Environment Settings Enforcer. So, my friend, if you would like to take over the screen, the floor is yours. Sure. Thanks, David. Hi, everyone. Super happy to be here. Can you see my screen okay? I can. Looks great. Wonderful. So this setting enforcer solution came from a question I was asking myself a little bit over a year ago now, which was how can we as uh, standard administrators or power platform COEs manage environment settings at scale in a large organization? Now, you, you know, you, we could do it via the Power Platform Admin Center, but it takes quite a few clicks to manage the environment settings of each environment, especially if you have hundreds of environments. And the system administrator of the environments are able to revert those settings to whatever they want. Uh, there's nothing stopping them from doing so. So that's that, that was the challenge. Now, since I released that environment setting enforcer solution, Microsoft released uh, environment groups. Now, if you are one of these organizations with a premium license for all your users, uh, yes, environment groups could be leveraged for something similar. Uh, there's two caveats to this. One is not all the environment settings can be managed, uh, applied to an environment group. And the other issue that I find in our case is one environment cannot be added to several groups. You can't overlap groups together. And it's very likely, at least that's the case for us, uh, we couldn't come up with one grouping strategy that would work for all the settings. Some settings we might want to apply to a certain group of environments, but some other settings for that same group might not apply to all the environments of that group. So it was not uh, suited to what we were looking for. Now, luckily for us, when you change a setting from the Power Platform Admin Center, for most settings, they're actually saved in the organization table of that environment. So you have every setting in the PPAC, is related to a column in the organization table. Now, it's not the case for all the settings, but for most of them. And so that's exactly what the environment settings enforcer leverages. You install that solution in an environment and it allows you to create setting policy. You can think of them a little bit like DLP policies. You create a policy, you assign it to some environments, and then that policy is deployed to those environments and it will in update the organization table of all these uh, target environments to set the settings as you want. Now, without further uh, talk, I'm going to demo this. And first, let's go to the PPAC in the demo target one environment. I'm at the, the setting page from the PPAC, and we're gonna look at those two settings. I can enable or disable the preview models for AI Builder. Let's turn that on. And I can also enable the AI prompt. I'm not gonna change it here, actually. I'm not going to click save yet. Let's now look at the organization table of that same environment. And I've filtered two columns, one to enable the AI prompt. And the other one, you probably wouldn't guess it, but it's actually to enable the preview model of AI Builder. Now, those are turned off here, and they were turned off here. I'm going to enable AI Builder from the PPAC and click save. And if now I refresh my organization table, I can see that this setting is now turned on. Let's do it. For the other one, I'm going to turn it on from uh, the organization table. I'm going to wait for it to be saved. If I refresh the PPAC, those two settings should now be turned on. Uh, let's just wait a second to confirm. Now, this was done via the interface, hundreds of environments, very cumbersome. How can we do this with the setting enforcer? The setting enforcer is composed of a few flows and a model driven app. And that first page is about the setting options. So you have to add all the settings that you want to be able to control via your setting enforcers. When you add a new setting option, you have to, each setting option needs to be related to a column of the organization table. And so you do this via the logical name field. So what I will do if I wanted to create this manually, I will go into this column from the organization table. I will open the advanced options, find the logical name, and paste it in oh blah, paste it in here, and then set up the name, display name, description. The type is, uh, there's two types of uh, feed settings that are supported. One of them is integer. So for example, if you want to set the session timeout in the environment, you'll need to in, in, uh, add a number. The other one is whether it's on or off on the environment. So in that case, it will be a ease fitter enabled type. And then you can do this for all the columns you're interested in, but you might not want to do this manually uh, for all those settings. So I have created a flow 
that will pre-populate about 20 or 21 of the most common settings. And when you run that flow, it will populate exactly all those setting options that I was showing here. You could also, of course, add uh, custom one, other ones if you're interested uh, in managing more settings. Once you have your setting options added, you need to set the configuration. The configuration is to say, what value do you want for this setting before adding them to the DLP policy, to the setting policy? So I'm gonna click new, and let's say we want to uh, disable prompt, for example. I'm gonna look for the prompt setting option, and I'm gonna set it to no because I want to disable it. So the AI prompt enable is no, that will disable prompts. Great, let's save and close and add a new one for the preview model. And we'll say disable AI preview. I will look for the AI builder setting and I will also set it to no. Now I click save and close. I've got my two configurations added. I need now to create a policy and add those configuration to the policy. So I'll go to setting policy, create a new policy. I will say disable prompt and AI builder Preview models, priority is one. So if you have several policies assigned to the same environment, there's an order in which they will be applied. So if they overlap on the settings, the last one will have the say on what's the setting value for that setting. You can set it to auto request. This means that it will be requested every day. Every day the policy will be deployed reactively, or you could set it to no if you just want to ad hoc on one off uh, deploy that policy. I'm gonna save it once add the two configuration we have created for our settings to disable prompt and the AI preview models. And I'm gonna now select environments. Now there's a dependency on the Siri kit to find the list of environment, but if you have a problem with this, please feel free to reach out via LinkedIn. I'll be really happy to show you how you can uh, remove that dependency. Let's add free environments for this policy for the demo. I click add, and now I have my policy created with the setting configuration I want to uh, update and add my free environments that I want to have in scope of that policy. I can click on the deploy button. It's gonna ask me a quick confirmation to say it will update those environment settings. Are you sure? There could be an impact. Let's click, okay, we're sure. What it's doing is it's creating a row in my policy deployment table. And as it creates that row, there is a flow that will run that will check the configurations that we want to deploy. And it will update the deployed configuration field with the playload that will be sent to Dataverse to update the organization table of each of those environments. So it's using the logical name and the value we've defined. You can see the flow run history if you want to see the flow run and see exactly what happened. And at the same time, that flow will also create an individual row for each environment that you want to deploy the settings to. So that's the setting deployments table. If I go in here, it created one row per environment. So we can see demo target one, two, three, the same policy um, and is the same deployment. And creating a row in that table will trigger the flow that will actually update the organization table. So now it's all been succeeded. If I go back to my organization table, and refresh, those two settings should be turned off. I can also refresh from the PPAC. And this is basically how you can use the settings enforcer to uh, manage environment settings at scale in an organization. It's very quick to update. If you go back to that setting policy, remember uh, set to auto request, it means that tomorrow it will run again in case the system admin change the settings, it will be reverted back. And one more thing to mention is you might have some very clever sysadmin that want to that set up their own automation to revert the settings back. You can use an environment variable in that solution so that it will run at a different time every day so that they can't really plan exactly when that will be uh, happening. So that's just in case you have this type of system admins we do. Uh, so that's a little thing to make it a bit harder for them. Now, um, this solution is not perfect. There's a few limitations. First one is it's reactive only, uh, unfortunately, meaning that it does not prevent the sysadmin from changing that setting. The second one, which is in my opinion, the biggest one, I don't believe this is something that Microsoft supports. So there's no documentation saying, hey, if you change this setting, you can also change it via the organization table. 
meaning that if you still decide to use it, you're responsible uh, in the case uh, if Microsoft changes their approach, changes the organization column or what those settings do, you will be responsible in case something goes wrong. Uh, and yes, that structure can vary. And also some columns are not very specific and do not do exactly what it seems they do when you look at the name in the organization table. Uh, so it's all things to uh, take into account. Now, if you would like to use this solution, I am sharing it on my blog, powertricks.io. Uh, you will find a bunch of articles there with some reusable tools that mainly centered around governance. And in each of these articles, so if we go in the environment setting one, you will have a link to um, my GitHub repo uh, where you can download it. And so feel free to check it out, powertricks.io. Uh, you have the unmanaged and the managed solution. And most of all, if you have any feedback, any ideas, any comment about any of those things or anything else, please let me know. It's always a pleasure to hear from the community. And a lot of the solutions were actually created based on some interactions I had with you guys. So uh, big kudos to anyone who uh, discuss those things with me and I hope you will uh, enjoy the solution. And that said, I should be just over my, just under my time, actually, my 12 You minutes, are under, David. my friend. Yeah, you are awesome. <laughs> You're I, keeping have, us on track, Valentin. Thank we you. Have, we have time for your little dance now.